Hello and welcome. I'm Scott Dennis. Thanks so much for joining us. Our top story today at noon, a death investigation in Venice. Venice police are investigating the death of the 23-year-old woman. Police say her body was found off South Park Boulevard in Venice around 745 this morning. Police have not said how the woman died or released her name. This is a troubling situation and we're obviously concerned. We don't know at this point whether or not we're dealing with a homicide, but we are very initial into our investigation and we're hoping to come back with some more information soon. Police say it appears to be an isolated incident and there's no danger to the community. A Port Charlotte man is in critical condition after he was hit by a Jeep early this morning in Northport. Northport police say 28 year old Shane Gill was not using the crosswalk when he tried to cross US 41. That's when he was hit by the Jeep. Gill was flown to Sarasota Memorial Hospital for treatment, and again at last check, he was in critical condition. Northport police continue to investigate a deadly stabbing following a kidnapping attempt. Police say the woman was getting out of her car on Wesley Avenue early Wednesday morning when a man armed with a knife confronted her. Police say she was able to get the knife from him and then stab him several times. 32-year-old John Ludwig was found nearby and later died at the hospital. Investigators say Ludwig is a former boyfriend of the woman and had claimed to be connected to the Natalie Holloway case, cremating her remains. We're pretty confident that he had some ill intentions here uh, to do at least a kidnapping. If not, you know, what, what his intentions were after that, we may never know. Uh, but they certainly did not appear to be good ones. Police continue to investigate and say the woman was acting in self-defense and will not be charged. New at noon, the Manatee County Sheriff's Office reporting a drop in drug overdoses. In the first two months of 2018, there have been 47 overdoses. Now, over that same time period of, from last year, there were 172 overdoses. So far, there have been six overdose-related deaths this year. That compares to 21 last year. The Sheriff's Office attributing the drop to the arrest of those selling the drugs and deputies working with addicts to make sure they get the help they need. Well, around 200,000 people use the Legacy Trail each year. Now, this November, voters will decide if Sarasota County should spend up to $65 million to extend that popular trail to the north. The county commission deciding to place a bond referendum on the November 6th general election ballot. The referendum will ask the public to approve buying the land that's needed to extend the trail. Right now, it runs from the historic train depot in Venice to Culver House Nature Park in South Sarasota. The county wants to use bonds that would be repaid with property taxes to extend the trail about nine miles north to Payne Park. The county would need to borrow around $30 million to buy the land and another $30 million for construction. We love trails. It gets people to come to a neighborhood and visit and spend money, eat food and enjoy. County leaders are still trying to secure federal and state funding that could help offset some of the cost to build that Legacy Trail extension. A lot of people excited about that, if it can happen. Uh, be able to ride your bike from Venice into downtown Sarasota. That would be pretty, cool. pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah, that would be really nice. Really nice. Uh, we are looking at some really nice weather out there oh, as beautiful. well this afternoon. Yeah. yeah, absolutely great. We started off the day very chilly in places. We were in the 30s even. So uh, that's kind of unusual for this time of year, especially to have that uh, several days in a row like this. But uh, such as it is, we're looking at uh, temperatures that will respond according to the uh, sunshine that we're getting. All that sunshine out there, a beautiful, beautiful start to the day. Blue skies, deep blue skies. Uh, the sunshine and the calmer winds, too, will combine together to help provide us with a nice afternoon with daytime highs warmer than yesterday. A lot of sunshine across the entire state, actually. Satellite view not showing any cloud cover around, thanks to a big ridge of high pressure sitting right over us. 62 Lakewood Ranch, 64 already in uh, Sarasota. 62 degrees in Bradenton. Temperatures generally in the low 60s most everywhere, though we do have a few mid-60s on the board. We're on our way to a daytime high that'll top out near the 70 mark. Not a drop of rain anywhere across the state. And when you have dry air in place like we do right now, you generally start off cool but end up on the warm side. And we'll be at about 70 today, warmer than yesterday. Still well below the average for this time of year, but on a, on a warming trim that'll take us pretty close to the average by the time we get into the weekend. We'll talk about that, talk about the next frontal boundary approaching us coming up in just a few. Scott. Thank you, John. Now to a developing story. School superintendents in Florida are asking Governor Rick Scott to call a special legislative session on education funding. 
Florida lawmakers recently approved an $88 billion budget for the fiscal year, but superintendents say the budget does not cover the rising cost of operating schools. A large part of the overall funding increase went to school safety and mental health initiatives, which became a priority, of course, after the mass shooting in Parkland. While superintendents support directing more money to those services, they say limiting other funding will force them to eliminate some programs. Sarasota County School Superintendent Todd Bowden is using Twitter to urge voters to renew the one mill referendum funding for public schools. The measure has been approved by voters four times. The one mill is equal to $1 for every $1,000 of the taxable assessed value of a home. The school district says money raised by this referendum translates to roughly 13% of the school district's budget. I'm standing here in front of artwork from our students at Booker High School, and the mill makes that possible. It funds art, music, and drama positions throughout our district, as well as STEM, and even some of our safety initiatives are funded by that additional mill. The referendum will be on the ballot in an upcoming election on March 20th, next Tuesday. Residents can take part in early voting now through Saturday, March 17th. A company that helped define childhood memories for decades will soon be no more. Toys R Us is shutting down and selling all of its 740 stores in the United States, including the one on Cortez Road West in Bradenton, the last remaining store here on the Sun Coast. As John Lawrence reports, the closures will have a ripple effect on everything from toy makers to landlords. Jeffy, I want something new to love. There's so much to love the Toys R Us. It's the end of an era. It's the biggest toy store there is. Gee whiz! Toys R Us, the iconic retailer, will shut down or sell all of its nearly 800 stores in the United States, which means there will not be a new generation of Toys R Us kids. I want to grow up on a Toys R Us kid. They got a million toys and Toys R Us that I can play with. The announcement comes six months after Toys R Us filed for bankruptcy and two months after announcing plans to close nearly 200 stores. There are a lot of concerns about retailers that are facing intense competition from, of course, Amazon and also Walmart, and it's just a very difficult time for some of these specialty retailers. The collapse of Toys R Us will likely have a ripple effect. This is bad news for Hasbro and Mattel. The two big toy makers get about 10% of their revenues from Toys R Us. In addition to that, about 33,000 American jobs are at risk. Toys R Us hasn't earned a full year profit in six years and has lost $2.5 billion since then. Analysts believe Toys R Us also didn't have strong sales during the 2017 holiday season. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And today we talked to employees at the Toys R Us store in Bradenton. They say they'll likely close in about 60 days but they do not have an official closing date yet. But if you have a gift card to Toys R Us, you will need to use it soon. You only have 30 days left to use that card. Well, one month from today is the deadline to submit your 2017 tax return. But are you doing all you can to save or maybe make some money? ABC 7's Ray Collins joins us now with some tips from the experts, Ray. Yeah, Scott, we talked to two local accountants and asked them each for their three best tax tips. So some you've heard before, but there's also some new ones with the changing tax code you should know about for next year's deadline. Here we go. IRA or to your company's 401k. This is, will be one of the best things that you can do for your taxes. You'll get a current year deduction. You'll save for the future. If you sustained a loss due to Hurricane Irma in 2017, and your loss is greater than $500 after insurance reimbursements, you may be able to claim that loss on your 2017 income tax return. If you're self-employed, to take advantage of the home office deduction. In 2018, under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act recently passed, um, the, a family can now claim a child tax credit up to $2,000 per child. With the new tax law changes, the IRS has increased the standard deduction so a lot of people will not be able to take an itemized deduction for the real estate taxes and mortgage interest. One way that you can get around this would be to double some of your, your bills in one year. In 2018, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act um, increased the standard deduction for a married couple up to 24000 So some of these tips might pertain to you, some not. They'll all be on our website, mysuncoast.com. And again, the deadline for this year is one month from today, Scott.
Counting down. All right, Ray, thanks so much. Still to come in your Suncoast News, doctors are seeing a huge increase for children who have peanut allergies. The new pill that's now being called a game changer. Plus, United Airlines hitting the headlines yet again how a dog was put on the wrong plane and flown all the way to Japan. That story coming up. My name is Blake. I received a heart transplant when I was two weeks old. I play defense for the Red Hot Tornadoes. Sometimes my heart starts pounding like faster and faster as I go. I know I have someone else's heart inside me. It makes me feel happy because someone was generous enough to give me a second chance to live. This gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Motor Trend said the new Alfa Romeo Giulia is hands down the best sports sedan you can buy today. And named it the 2018 Motor Trend Car of the Year. Rediscover your passion for driving at Sunset Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. So Matt told me to meet him at 7 a.m. sharp right here. It is now 7.01 a.m. You think Matt will leave without me? Hey, is Matt here? Uh, long con. Long con. Just missed him. Just missed him. All done. Mr. Sparky guarantees they're on time and the repair is free, so chop chop. Call 888 Sparky. Matt, you started without me. I finished without you, too. <laughs> Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. ABC7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Watch ABC7 wherever you are, on our live stream, on mysuncoast.com, on the ABC7 My Suncoast app, powered by the I Associates, providing sight for life, featuring traffic maps and live radar, dining with recipes, and My Suncoast restaurant guide. Visit mysuncoast.com, click on the Apps tab to download the ABC7 My Suncoast app for Apple and Android. Get breaking news alerts focused on the Sun Coast. Download the ABC7 News app. When evaluating the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, Car and Driver magazine said every crossover should be this good to drive. We agree. Rediscover your passion for driving at Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. Now your ABC7 first alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. We're warming nicely on the Sun Coast. Uh, we're at 64 degrees right now, and I see no reason why we can't add another 6 degrees onto that before the day is over. Coming in at about 70, which is warmer than yesterday, but still below our average for this time of year. Dew point values have fallen as we thought they might this morning, now at 32. So very dry, comfortable air out there right now. Northeast, east northeast wind rather coming in at about 7. That easterly component to our northerly wind kind of signaling a change in flow pattern across the area that is going to produce some very mild temperatures as we head into the weekend. A lot of sunshine out there helping to boost our temperature by 3 p.m. up to about 70 degrees. As we head into the evening, because those dew point values are down into the 30s, very dry air is in place, and I think we'll watch our temperatures kind of fall off pretty rapidly after the sun sets. Winds will be fairly calm. Sun will set and the heating of the day will end and temperatures will fall into the 40s pretty quickly, I think. By the time we get to, um, uh, I'd say around 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. We'll bottom it out at 7 a.m. by around 46 degrees or so. High pressure, the dominant weather feature, is shifting today. And as it shifts, it makes a change in our weather pattern that will continue on for about another 4 or 5 days. The high pressure ridge moving eastward is basically going to cut off the flow of cold air south and not allow that to happen over the state of Florida. So we have a chance for the air that's here to kind of modify just a little bit with a little daytime heating. Then as that high kind of moves out into the Atlantic, we see a wind shift coming in out of the east now, as you're beginning to see right now with that east-northeast wind. We'll see it turn east, eventually even southeast, and that'll help pump humidity back into our area, pump uh, higher dew point air into our area, which will allow for the nighttime lows to all stay, uh, also stay a little bit warmer. 
Now that will happen most particularly over the weekend, but for tonight and maybe even a little bit tomorrow night, the weather is going to be kind of cool and crisp when you wake up in the mornings. We'll probably see a morning temperature tomorrow similar to what we saw today. So we'll call it a start of daytime warm up today with temperatures near the 70s. Still cool at nights for a couple of nights till we moisten the air and don't allow the temperatures to fall off so fast. And then we'll wait for next week to see some rain showers. Until then, it's going to be dry right straight through the weekend, I think. Taking a look at the future cast, you'll see what I mean. High pressure sitting over the state of Florida provides us with lots of sunshine today, tomorrow, maybe a few extra cloud cover, a little bit of extra cloud cover as we head into the weekend, but nothing terribly bad. We're going to have lots of sunshine over the weekend. Then as we head into the beginning of next work week, a low pressure area located to our north will have a trailing cold front back into Texas that will advance in this direction. And I think by the time we get to Tuesday, we'll see that front basically over us, giving us a good chance of rainfall, probably the best chance of rainfall that we will have uh, next week. Then the front sinks south, clears us out, and some cooler air filters in, so we'll see a little bit of a change in our temperature coming as we head into uh, next week. North wind coming in at about 10 knots today. Nice day for boating compared to what we have seen with the gusty winds. We'll look for 70 for a daytime high today, 74 tomorrow. Lots of sunshine, few extra clouds over the weekend perhaps, but very mild as nighttime temperatures begin to rise into the 50s and 60s. We'll see daytime highs kind of getting pretty close to that 80 degree mark. Then on Monday, we'll cloud up just a little bit, and on Tuesday, we'll work in that chance of showers with that passing front, and then things will turn cooler on Wednesday. Scott? John, thanks so much. Doctors say they're seeing more and more cases of peanut allergy in children. One estimate, two kids in every class are affected. Now, while there's no treatment for peanut allergies, there is hope. Denise Tador shows us a new experimental pill some are calling a game changer. Say ah! Toddlers like Benjamin Garango usually get shots at the doctor. Instead, he's getting a dose of almond butter. Through testing, allergists see firsthand what Benjamin can tolerate. Prior tests showed he's severely allergic to peanuts. But it's just going to be about teaching him that he can't eat peanuts, he can't eat peanut butter, and why. And Food allergy can be life-threatening. So it causes a constant worry in people. For some, just a taste could cause a severe reaction, like anaphylactic shock. That can cause the throat to swell. Currently, the only treatment is avoidance. But Dr. Katie Marks Hogan says Benjamin is a good candidate for a new immunotherapy called AR101. Preliminary research on these pills looks promising. After a year, about 70% were able to tolerate one peanut kernel. Which doctors say is huge. Phase three trials showed it was safe and effective. The treatment trains the immune system not to overreact to peanuts. So this gives us hope that through um, through the pill, you'll be able to eventually tolerate peanuts and it'll, it'll be less scary for him. But what it does do is minimize their risk for a severe life-threatening reaction if they were to accidentally eat Peanut. But when this pill becomes available, it's important to remember that it's not a cure for allergies. Rather, doctors say, think of it as a life preserver. That can actually bring a lot of peace of mind to these patients and their families. Patients would have to take the medication for life. It'll be about one to two years before AR101 is available. By then, Benjamin will be old enough to get treatment. In Torrance, Denise Tador, ABC7 Eyewitness News. All right, time to head over to our kitchen and say hello to our good friend, Chef Jamil Pineda, who joins us today from Michael's on East, of course. Jamil, great to see you back in our kitchen. What is on your menu for today? So we're going to be celebrating baseball for Sarasota. So we're doing a nice Maryland uh, pen sear herb uh, cod with some beautiful uh, uh, muscle broth, some pistachios, some farro, so stay tuned. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. Our promise means a new car you'll love. If not, return it for one you do. At Sarasota Ford, we promise live market pricing. We monitor national pricing on our entire inventory so you get the best deal. In fact, we guarantee it. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. Northland Outdoors is about so much more than the biggest fish or the hottest hunting spots. 
All across the Northland, there are amazing people with incredible stories to tell. We're going to find those stories and share them with everyone. Join us each and every week as we explore the Northland and experience some of the most exciting outdoor adventures in the country right here in our own backyard. This is Northland Outdoors. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. To be able to just get my son here and not think about how we will pay for it, it just takes so much weight off of my family. St. Jude allowed me to focus on being a mom to Bryce. And sometimes I'm just in awe of the impact St. Jude has, not only on this community, but the world. Our nation's servicemen and women show great courage and leadership, both on and off the battlefield. When they transition to civilian life, they can apply the skills and values they learned in the military to the workplace. That's why the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes is urging employers everywhere to be smart, bet on a vet. Hiring a veteran is also a great way to show your appreciation for them. To learn more, call 1-888-44-SALUTE. ABC7, the Suncoast's official Florida lottery station. More trouble for United Airlines involving another family pet. A 10-year-old German Shepherd that was supposed to fly from Oregon to Kansas was instead sent to Japan. Kara Swindle flew from Oregon to Kansas City and her dog was supposed to fly along in cargo. But when she went to pick up her German Shepherd, she was met with a Great Dane. According to the airline, the mix-up occurred during a connection in Denver where the two dogs were accidentally placed in the wrong carriers after they were walked. United apologizes for the mistake and says they are now investigating. And this apology comes after the death of a puppy, Coquito, on a flight from Houston to New York earlier this week. Coquito died after the family says a flight attendant demanded they stow him inside the overhead compartment for the duration of a three-hour flight. United says their flight attendant did not hear or understand there was a dog in the bag and did not knowingly place that dog in the overhead bin. The ride hailing service Lyft is teaming up with a Canadian auto parts supplier to develop self-driving vehicles. Lyft and Magna will share expenses on the project. And as part of this deal, Magna says it will invest $200 million in Lyft. In Western Australia, a 68-year-old woman now has quite a fishtail. Sue Elcock was fishing with her son when she got a nibble on the line. Well, around 40 minutes later, she reeled in a 136-pound giant bass grouper that was more than 63 inches long. She's now known as a legend on the boat for pulling in the biggest catch ever on that boat. Pretty incredible. Let's head over to the kitchen and check in with Chef Jamil Pineda and John uh, for something delicious we know. Guys. Oddly enough, we're cooking fish today. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, you're good, good to see you. <laughs> so this is actually a Maryland cod, uh -huh. you know, celebrating the uh, baseball here in Sarasota. Right. So right here, you know, it's going to be a very simple. This is actually in our um, Epicurean menu for dinner. As we do, you know, dinner and lunch. But every, every year, it's a traditional now that we do a Maryland menu, you know, to celebrate baseball. So, and then we come up with some of the things that you would think that you can find in baseball, but some around the city you know, around the baseball stadium. So right here, we're just going to do a nice Maryland cod, you know, and what I'm going to end up start doing right here is adding a little salt and pepper. And then we're just going to do that. And then to crust it, I'm going to add a little bit of oil right here so that the uh, herbs can actually stick to it. And you don't want to put too much. Now you got parsley, thyme, and a little bit of a rosemary in here to be able to get mm. a nice, beautiful herb flavor. And then we made a beautiful um, uh, mussel, uh, kind of like a tomato mussel broth. We add a little bit of butter at the end, almost make mm -hmm. it like almost like a little bit blanc with a little cream and stuff for that. So then I'm going to go ahead and do a little more oil right on top. Even though you got oil in the pan, but you want to be able to make sure that this actually sticks to 
the fish. So this is gonna be act like a, a breading, as it were. So it's almost like a breading, but it's like more like a little crust, basically. Mm -hmm. So you know how do you do a crust with uh, nuts and all that kind of stuff right here. So we're just gonna have to start do that, and I'll start this in a medium high. And now, if you can see, the pan is not extremely, extremely hot. The reason you don't want to get it too, you don't want too hot is because you don't want to burn the herbs. You want to make sure they just stick to the fish and give you that beautiful flavor. And you got a ways to go, I would imagine, before oh, yeah, you cook through the oh, fish. There, right? So we're gonna start with the farro. What we're looking for the farro here is basically is to make it crispy. Farro is almost like a, uh, uh, a mixture. You know, it's, it's a nice grain. It's, it's a rice grain, but a lot of people can see like spelt. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, so what I want to do here, basically, is I'm going to get some uh, tasso, and that's New Orleans. Uh, oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Yeah, nice New Orleans uh, spice ham. What I'm going to end up doing is going to start right here with the uh, tasso to get the flavor going, so we can get a, a nice flavor. Once again, the pan is going to be going to get the little crisp. I got some little pistachios here. And what we're going to be looking for then, I got some uh, snap peas right here as well. So you're gonna look for a nice little color on this, and we're just gonna start cooking that. Mm. And just get that uh, the flavor of the tasso, the pistachio, and the uh, and that going. And then don't be afraid to add a little oil to this because we want to be able to uh, cook a little faster. And we want to get that uh, farro in there, and then we want to get it crispy. So when you actually have it in the dish, you know you're gonna have a nice flaky fish. You're gonna get a crispy farro, some beautiful um, uh, pistachios. And then we're gonna have the nice, beautiful uh, muscle broth. Oh, that sounds awesome! So it's gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. So, so did you, you you pre cook the farro, right? Yeah, I pre cook the farro, and you cook it, you know, like any. You don't cook it like a rice. You cook it like a nice grain. Basically, you put some water um, on the stove, almost like a pasta style, but mm -hmm. not really. And you add uh, salt, and then you add the uh, the farro into it, and then cook it. Once you can, you can taste is maybe a little bit al dente. If you want a little co extra cook, you cook a little more. But you want to be able to cook it here al dente so you can get nice uh, crispy, almost like a little popcorn. Got about so, 25 <laughs> seconds left. Yeah, so right there, we're going to let that cook right here. After we flip this, we're going to put it in the oven, and then mm -hmm. we're going to have the dish ready to go right there. So and so how long it. do you leave it in the oven after you've uh, taken it off the, um, the You put it about five to six minutes. Five in. to six and minutes. And I got a 425 degrees. And then you top it all up. There is the final product. Exactly. Oh my gosh, looks like you put a little microgreens on there as well. Uh -huh. Looks absolutely gorgeous. Remind everybody, the recipe for this is on our website, mysuncoast.com. How long will this be on the uh, menu, Chef? It's going to be until the end of uh, March. The end of March, and that looks like beautiful fish, I got to tell you. Look at there. Chef Jamil, Michael Sanis, thank you so very much, sir. Thank you. For Always having. a pleasure. We'll be right back. Alex Karras Lincoln's 40th anniversary sale. Please join us in welcoming the two newest additions to the Lincoln lineup, our flagship luxury sedan, the 2018 Lincoln Continental, and the totally redesigned 2018 Lincoln Navigator. Featuring 450 horsepower, 10-speed transmission, and many best-in-class features, Alex Karras Lincoln, where our mission statement is consistent commitment, every client, every time. Located two miles north of the Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US 41. I'll be right back. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. One of the motivating factors for me to uh, become a big brother was that I was mentored as a youth. And it was important for me to kind of pass forward the things that were kind of given to me. It's really just as simple as getting to know a kid. You don't have to be an athlete. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to have any of those other things. You just have to be willing to spend a little time and help mold some young person's life. I'll be right back.
Hi. You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home, just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that? Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. <laughs> protection she has. Buddy up. I'm Jill Harrington. Please visit HelpSaveTheNextGirl.com and get involved. You're watching ABC 7 News at 1230. Welcome back now to the latest on a military plane crash. A Navy fighter jet goes down off the coast of the Florida Keys. The search and rescue operation began within minutes of the Wednesday afternoon crash. The F-18 went down during its final approach from the Naval Air Station in Key West. The jet went down in shallow waters about a mile away from the runway. Rescue were searched nearby for the two naval aviators who ejected from the aircraft as it went down. It to be upside down at the time they left the cockpit. There might not have been enough room for the parachutes to open. The aviators were found just a mile from the aircraft in the water. Both were declared dead after arriving at a Florida hospital. Investigators are still working to piece together what went wrong in that flight. There's now new documents showing a Trump uh, organization attorney working to keep adult film star Stormy Daniels from talking about an alleged affair with the president more than a decade ago. ABC's Serena Marshall has the latest. They're marked highly confidential. The documents given to ABC News by a lawyer for Stormy Daniels, part of the case seeking a temporary restraining order against the adult film star in late February, including a demand for arbitration signed by a Trump Organization lawyer, Jill Martin. But what isn't noted anywhere? Martin's connection to the Trump Organization. Do you have a non-disclosure agreement? Do I? Daniels, seen here with Donald Trump in a picture she shared on social media, received $130,000 from the president's personal attorney, Michael Cohen, just days before the election, as part of a non-disclosure agreement, stemming from her alleged decade-old affair. Cohen says he facilitated the payment with a personal home equity line, and neither the Trump campaign nor the Trump organization were involved. Yeah, I've had conversations with the president about this, um, and as I outlined earlier, that this case had already been won in arbitration, um, and that there was no knowledge of uh, any payments from the president, and he's denied all of these allegations. Although the new documents include the location as the Trump National Golf Course near Los Angeles and signed by Trump corporate attorney Martin, she says she did so in her individual capacity, and the company has had no involvement in the matter. Earlier this week, Daniels, whose real name is Stephanie Clifford, offered to pay back the $130,000 but give it directly to the president to settle all legal fights and arbitration. The White House passed on the offer. Serena Marshall, ABC News, Washington. It's now day two of the trial for the wife of the Pulse nightclub shooter in Orlando. Jurors are listening to the emotional testimony of witnesses at the shooting where 49 people were killed. Federal prosecutors are trying to link Noor Salman to the actions of her husband, Omar Mateen. He was killed by police during the incident nearly two years ago. If convicted, Salman could face life in prison. Two people are dead and another person in the hospital following a shooting at an Alabama hospital. Police in Birmingham say a man walked into UAB Hospital Highlands yesterday and then opened fire. Police say he shot two people before turning the gun on himself. One hospital worker was killed, another wounded. That person is now recovering and in stable condition. Surveillance video from a school shooting in Parkland is expected to be released to the public today. It comes a day after students across the country and here on the Suncoast staged a walkout demanding tougher uh, gun laws and safer schools. Gun control. Students from more than 3,000 schools nationwide flooded out of their classrooms in a show of solidarity. They demanded action against guns, summing up their message in one word, enough. Meanwhile, on Capitol Hill, the House approved $500 million for school safety improvements, including training teachers and students on how to prevent violence. But the bill does not address changes to any gun laws. 
The Senate is considering a similar measure. An update now on this year's flu season, which has been one of the worst in decades. Lawmakers in the federal government are now trying to figure out what went wrong and what can be done in the future. In previous years, the flu season started in October and ended roughly by the end of April. But this year, physicians began to see cases of the virus earlier than expected, which resulted in more than 100 pediatric deaths. Doctors at Methodist Dallas Medical Center say this was the first time every state in the country experienced epidemic levels of activity at the same time. Even though they predicted the viruses correctly and the vaccine components were accurate, it appears that one of the viruses, the H3N2 virus, mutated or changed dramatically enough so that the vaccine over time became less effective during the influenza season. Dr. Dominguez says the final tally of the number of people affected this flu season will not be released until this summer, and it will take researchers another two years before they know why this strain of flu mutated so quickly. Tonight, the Florida Department of Transportation is hosting a public hearing on improvements to a stretch of U.S. 41 in Sarasota County. FDOT wants to add a median, paved shoulders, bike lanes, sidewalks, and other improvements to 41 from Blackburn Point Road to McIntosh Road in the Osprey area. You can get a look at the proposed design at a meeting tonight. It will be at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish on Bernie Road in Osprey. That meeting will start at 6 o'clock. Disney World hotel guests will soon pay to park. Disney officials say as of March 21st, hotel guests will have to pay a small fee for overnight parking. That fee will be tacked on to their bill when they check out. Prices vary depending on where you stay. For value resorts, it's $13 a night. For moderate resorts, $19 a night. And for the deluxe and deluxe villa resorts, $24 a night. There's still a little bit of good news here. Resort guests can still park for free at the theme parks, at least for now. We'll wait on that. All right, meteorologist John Skulls, he's back with us now. And uh, I would think this week is a, it would be a good one to go to one of the theme parks. It's just so oh, nice yeah. outside, nice and cool. You don't yeah. have to worry about being too hot. Right, which is usually yeah. what you have to do, in yeah. the, especially in the summertime Absolutely. when you wait those lines. The lines may be shorter, but, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty rough. Yeah. In some of those places you have to wait 45 minutes or more in, in line. So it's just gorgeous to do anything out of doors today. A lot of blue sky out there. Low relative humidity with dew points in the 30s. <clears throat> Not a chance in the world of any rainfall today. And as the uh, Lakewood Ranch webcam put into motion over the last six hours shows, well, it doesn't show much. There's just no cloud cover out there. It is a beautiful, beautiful sky. 63 degrees in Mayaka City, Arcadia the same. Uh, looking at 62 degrees in Wachula, Parrish, Bradenton, Lakewood Ranch, 63, 64 degrees in Sarasota, 63 in Venice and in Inglewood, and 62 out at Longbow Key. It'll be a beautiful afternoon. These temperatures, by the way, are just about the same or a little warmer than they were 24 hours ago at this time, even though we started off the morning in some places almost 10 degrees cooler than 24 hours ago and in other places just actually a little bit warmer. So it depended on whether really you were near the coast or just a little bit inland. Big difference in temperatures depending on where you were. Across the deep south, everything looks good. Traveling today, Atlanta Airport, Raleigh, Durham, Charlotte, all look fine. Should be no airport delays due to weather. We'll talk about our next chance for some stormy weather coming up in just a few. Scott? John, thank you. <laughs> Well, a beloved member of our community and our ABC7 family has passed away. Dr. Edward James II dedicated his life to making the Sun Coast a better place for all. ABC7's Dwayne Lindo has a look back at his incredible life. Dr. Edward James dedicated his life to journalism, fighting for equal rights and being a voice for the voiceless. He was part of a family that had a storied history of civil rights activism and spent decades serving as a leader of the African-American community. Both personally and professionally, Dr. James helped make the Sun Coast a better place. Dr. James had an extensive background in government and public relations. His career included jobs as a columnist and government reporter, as well as a public information officer and deputy chief investigator for the state attorney's office for the 12th Judicial Circuit of Florida. Dr. James joined the ABC7 family back in 1972 as a weekend news anchor. That year, he also started producing and hosting the show Black Almanac. Good morning. I'm Ed James, and this is Black Almanac. 
It is now the longest airing locally produced public affairs program in the southeastern United States. Over the years, Black Almanac helped shed a light on concerns of the African American community, specifically Newtown. Dr. James fought for justice for a mother whose son was killed in an officer-involved shooting. He also invited law enforcement officials, local and state government leaders on the show regularly to get answers on what they were doing for the people in our communities. In 2017, Black Almanac celebrated its 45th anniversary. But it was the work Dr. James did outside the show that also made a lasting difference. Dr. James helped with the desegregation of the Sarasota County Public Library. He also served as a mentor for both adults and young people. It was Ed James, Ed James, that impacted my life. Including the principal of Booker High School, Dr. Rachel Shelley, by helping her graduate college. Dr. James also helped facilitate improvements in the Newtown community, including a new dugout at the Newtown Estates baseball field, so players would be protected from bad weather. That dugout is now dedicated in honor of Dr. James. Dr. James also spent decades working with nonprofit groups, including the NAACP, Coalition of African American Leadership, North Sarasota County Civic League, and many more. Dr. James was honored with a Lifetime Service Award and a Freedom Award by the Sarasota County NAACP. He was also given the Lifetime Achievement Award by the Sarasota African American Chamber of Commerce. Dr. James is survived by his wife, Helen, and three children. He was 78 years old. My name is Stephan Campagna. We're Ben Gates and Dramus, and here is your Law Tip of the Week. If you've been arrested in the state of Florida, the state attorney's office is already working on your prosecution. It's time to work on your defense. So give us a call. We've got your back. I just had a very educational ride with Nina. Did you learn anything? Where do I begin? So all this stuff goes into a safety check. Yep. It's a long list. It's important stuff. Test the smoke detector. Yep. Check the breaker box. Yep. Meter the GFCIs. Ground fault circuit interrupters. Why do that? <laughs> Call 888-8-SPARKY. Minnie, you make it look easy. Thanks, but don't do it yourself. Who's your guy? I actually started playing the game at 11 years old, so I started a little bit later than most players. But I was actually raised on Fighting Joe. The value here at Robert Chin Jones is unsurpassable. I mean, I have looked other places. I've traveled all the way across the country. Everything is perfect as far as everything is the golf course, the rolling of the greens. Everything that I've encountered has just been absolutely incredible. And for the money that you spend, for the value that you actually get, it is unsurpassable. I'd recommend it for anybody. Zupan, part of the U.S. Paralympic rugby team. In my game, movement is everything. I get frustrated when my move is blocked, especially when that guy has no right to be there, even just for a minute. I love a challenge, but I don't like to play this game every day. A message from the United Spinal Association. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blog, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. Now your ABC7 first alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. You know, I think if I had to just look at these current numbers for our conditions at the Sarasota International Airport, I would know immediately that the air felt fantastic outside by looking at that dew point value. 32 degrees. That is lovely. And you know what? That's not going to stick around forever. That dew point value will be back up into the 50s before you know it, certainly by the weekend. And um, it won't be long before we see those dew points in the 70s again. By the way, spring is just five days away. And that's always a good indication that the transition to more summer-like temperatures and feel to the air is, you know, just around the corner. Uh, hard to believe it's only about 70 plus days until the start of hurricane season, right? We have a lot of sunshine out there right now, but uh, still at an east-northeast wind making it feel pretty comfortable. 70 degrees the air temperature, dew uh, 70 degrees at 3 p.m. 
Uh, dew point values remain low right straight through the afternoon and into the evening as we'll carry on with that easterly component. We have a uh, 65 degree temperature by about 7 o'clock tonight. Should be a beautiful evening. A little bit of fair weather cloudiness perhaps. Gorgeous sunset on the way. 50 degrees by midnight and then as we head into the morning hours, we're back into the 40s and it'll be all cool and crisp once again, just as it did this morning across much of the Sun Coast. High pressure ridge is moving to the uh, east and as it does that, it basically cuts off the supply of cold air from draining into the state and allows for the winds as it moves out into the Atlantic to switch more to an easterly direction, which returns moisture to the atmosphere as well. And as that happens, we start to see our nighttime lows begin to stay a little bit warmer as the sun sets in the evening. And that will most notably be seen, I think, as we head into Saturday night and Sunday night. Um, tonight will be another cold night. The air is still kind of dry. So we'll look for this daytime warm up that starts today, taking us up to around the 70 degree mark and then still cool at night for the next couple of nights before we get that moisture back. <clears throat> and then we wait for that uh, dry weather that we'll have right straight through the weekend to give way to a few showers and the rain showers that we see building in the last few frames of our surface map is the reason why. We'll have a front starting to take shape back to the west and sink south along the northern Gulf Coast. Now until then, we stay dry across the state of Florida. Even on Friday, we have mostly sunny skies. I think on Saturday, we'll have pretty much the same thing. Then as we head into Tuesday, we'll watch that system move to the east. And as it does so, this trailing cold front that extends out into Gulf waters will approach us. As it approaches us, it triggers off a chance of showers maybe a thunderstorm or two. Now the air behind this front as it sinks south, moves away and clearer high pressure builds in. I don't think it's going to be quite as cool as this last front that moved through, but it will certainly knock our temperatures down. We'll be up near the 80 degree mark by the end of the weekend and we'll be back down into the upper 60s or low 70s by about Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. Titan radar not showing a drop of rain around anywhere throughout the deep south. Beautiful boating weather. North wind coming in at about 10, switching to the northwest perhaps a little bit in the evening. Light chop, two foot seas. Gorgeous out there compared to where we have been. So the forecast for today calls for 70. Tomorrow calls for 74. And then over the weekend, we will start to warm up to near the 80 degree mark and I don't see much in the way of any rain showers right straight through the weekend through your St. Patty's celebrations. Then as we get into Monday, we're looking at 78 degrees and a little chance of rainfall working its way into the forecast with some clearing and some cooler temperatures on Wednesday. Scott. All right, John, thank you. iHeart Media is filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection after reaching an agreement with investors. The news comes after a decade, uh, a decade after the private equity led buyout left the company with billions of dollars in debt. iHeart operates 856 radio stations in the world, including many here in the Sun Coast. The company says its day to day operations will continue during the restructuring process. Microsoft founder Bill Gates, who has been critical of President Trump's policies in recent months, is meeting with the president this afternoon in the Oval Office. Gates and his wife Melinda made President Trump part of their annual letter that they publish about the activities of their foundation. And in that letter, they address tough questions they frequently get, one of which was, how are President Trump's policies affecting your foundation's work? Amazon and eBay are now battling it out for bargain shoppers. Amy Wagner shows us the new low price pages on those sites. Loves a bargain, which is why Amazon and eBay just launched sites selling millions of products for less than 10 bucks. So how good are these deals? Amazon's site first launched with everything on its $10 and under page shipping for free, even to people who aren't Prime members. Now eBay has answered with a 10 buck and under side of its own, also with free shipping. So what can you find in these marketplaces? Well, pretty much everything from phone cases to hats to T-shirts, tools, toys and more all at or below that $10 price point. There are the predictable stocking stuffer kinds of items like earbuds and nail polish, but we also spotted some impressive deals, like these leather Alpine Swiss Rose Ballet Flats for just $9.99, and the phone chargers on both sides cost less than what you'd likely pay at a drugstore. The Simply Money point, both of these sites offer some good, inexpensive deals, but remember, even those $10 deals can add up fast. 
Makeup maven Bobby Brown is getting into the hotel business. Brown opening the new boutique hotel in her hometown of Montclair, New Jersey. She teamed up with her husband to create the George Inn. All of the hotel's 32 rooms have Brown's favorite products, which range from IKEA bathrobes to EOS skincare products. The hotel restaurant and tea room is serves, serviced by local pro producers who are hand selected by Bobby Brown. Still to come in your Suncoast News, a brewery in North Carolina has created a very unique drink that's catching the eyes of many. We'll have more on the special beer that's now available there. Get to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota for big savings during the spring sales event. Take a test drive and see why Jeep Grand Cherokee is the most awarded SUV of all time. Or for impressive off-road performance with a little bit of Suncoast style, shop the area's largest selection of new 2018 Jeep Wranglers. Stop by today and drive away in a new Jeep Cherokee for just $19,999. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. I'm Deshauna Barber. In 2016, I was proud to win the title of Miss USA. What makes me just as proud is my service in the U.S. military. In the service, a soldier gains skills and learns values like discipline and leadership. That makes them an asset to any business that hires them. If you're an employer on behalf of Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, remember to hire smart and bet on a vet. Visit saluteheroes.org or call this number to learn more. Growing up, my mom was afraid of the water, something she did not want me to feel. So I enrolled Missy in swim lessons. It changed my life. Missy Franklin. And now you can do the same for someone that you love. There's nothing more precious than your child's well-being. So act now before it's too late. Make a splash! I'm glad I did. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Visit USAswimmingfoundation.org to find, get, or give a swim lesson. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half, nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. Invest in Kids is a $7.5 million project to build a new Boys and Girls Club in South Manatee County. I'm Caleb Grimes, and I was a club kid. It's where I learned important life lessons, leadership, integrity, responsibility, and baseball. Thousands of kids attend the Boys and Girls Clubs, and after years of use, their club is slowly falling apart. Help us invest in kids. Make your donation today. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Enjoy some of the best Suncoast restaurants on me. Just go to mysuncoast.com slash dining, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and you can win a $50 gift card to a restaurant in our area. We'll pick a winner each week, so go on our website and sign up now. Well, a certain superhero movie keeps blasting past box office barriers. And if you like the music of the movies, we have a couple of stories ahead for you here. David Daniel has more in the Hollywood Minute. I've seen aliens drop from the sky. Yeah. But I have never seen anything like this. There's still no stopping Black Panther. The Marvel mega hit has passed The Dark Knight Rises to crack the top 20 on the all-time worldwide box office chart. And the film figures to climb even higher. It's been out for less than a month. I just need one thing first. And then it's just us 
music and the road. Music was a huge part of Baby Driver, and now there's more in store. The film's writer-director, Edgar Wright, posted this promo for Baby Driver Volume 2, the score for a score, featuring more music from the 2017 movie, remixes, dialogue excerpts, and more. The album is due out April 13th. Something inside me has always been there. Star Wars The Last Jedi is hitting home video with plenty of special features, including one especially dear to director Ryan Johnson. DVD buyers who use the free Movies Anywhere app can watch the whole film without dialogue or other audio, just John Williams' score. Johnson posted on Twitter, I really wanted to put this out. He wanted it, you got it. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Wielding a silver shovel instead of a lightsaber, Star Wars creator George Lucas helped break ground on a billion dollar museum in Los Angeles. It's called the Lucas Museum of Narrative Art and will be dedicated to the art of visual storytelling. The museum's mission will be to explain the myths, legends, stories, and portraits of people that shape societies and bring them together as one. The art will range from paintings and digital works to comic strips and movies like yeah, Star Wars. The museum is scheduled to open sometime in 2021. And a brewery in North Carolina is offering brews with glitter. At Bold Missy Brewery in Charlotte, edible glitter is now on the menu. It's named after Lisa Frank, the colorful and glittery school supplies of the 90s. The brewery says it's running low on the special beer and it will be available for a limited time. So drink up. Have a good day. So Matt told me to meet him at 7 a.m. sharp right here. It is now 7.01 a.m. You think Matt would leave without me? Hey, is Matt here? Uh, long con. Long con. Just missed him. Just missed him. All done. Mr. Sparky guarantees they're on time and the repair is free, so chop chop. Call 888 Sparky. Matt, you started without me. I finished without you, too. Car experts and customers agree there's a lot to love about a new Subaru. Subaru is Kelly Blue Book's 2017 most trusted brand, best overall brand, and lowest five-year cost to own. And Subaru Forester is an IIHS top safety pick for 12 years running. Now, lease the most award-winning small SUV, a new Subaru Forester for just $2.19 a month. Or get 0% financing with zero down during the Subaru A Lot to Love event. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota.